Hello everyone, welcome to a small turbo channel. So today we're going to have a tutorial or shall we say let's discuss this topic about elements and compounds part 2. So this module is coming from the division of Cebu province region 7. So I am going to discuss in here this topic so that those students who are having modular they can still understand this topic okay so let's start with this what i know an example of a strong acid is the answer is letter c muriatic acid next number two all of the following will change red litmus paper to blue except so the answer is letter d seven up or sprite number three your science teacher asks you to test substance X using a litmus paper. You have noticed that the blue litmus paper turns to red. This observation indicates that the substance is acidic. Alright, next, number four. The table below shows the result of observation and an extract from a plant. What is the nature of the extract? So the answer is letter B, basic. Uh, turns blue the, the litmus paper a solution with a pH of 11 is first tested with phenolphthalein and then with litmus what is the color of each indicator in this solution so the answer is letter C pink and litmus is blue so it's basically basic which of the following is most likely a basic substance the answer is letter B, detergent bar. Which of the following substance is an element? So this can be seen in the periodic table. It's letter B, iron. Next, number 8. Elements play an important role in the human body. Which of the following is correctly paired? So number 8 is letter D, sodium, important in nerve conduction and fluid balance. Number 9. Non-metals are brittle and are normally used as insulators. Which of the following pairs of elements are non-metals? Non-metals? So the answer is letter C, sulfur and iodine. Number 10. Which of the following statements is true for both elements and compounds? The answer is letter A. They are homogeneous. An element was subjected into flame and the acidity of the oxide form was tested. Solution for this oxide turned red litmus paper to blue. Most likely that element is? So the answer is letter B, nickel. Number 12. Which of the following statements or statements are true for non-metals? The answer is letter B. Three only, which is phosphorus and sulfur are non-conductors of heat and electricity. Number 13, which is true about metals? The answer is they are good conductors of heat. Number 14, substance A and B were tested for physical characteristics. The results show that substance A and substance B are malleable heat conductor, shiny and ductile. What is the nature of substance A and substance B? So the answer is letter B, metals. Number 15, which of the following elements is most likely ductile at room temperature? The answer is letter A, aluminum. For question 16, refer to the following information below. So the following table lists the pH of four solutions, J, K, L, and M. So which of the following statements about the acid-base character of the solutions is true? So the answer is letter B, solution K is more acidic than solution L. Number 17, which of the following statements is true concerning acids and bases? So the answer is letter B. Acids mixed with bases neutralize each other. Number 18. Which is the correct set of properties of an acid? So the answer is letter B. Sour taste, corrosive, change litmus from blue to red. Number 19. A solid substance was observed to conduct electricity in solution. It formed ash when burned. The ash solution changed red, red litmus paper to blue. What kind of substance is the solid? So number 19, the answer is letter C, metal. Number 20, Jeffrey wants to find out some distinguishing characteristics of metals. He used the aluminum can, 
iron nail, gold ring, and silver spoon. He finally noted that these materials display the same kind of properties. Which of the following describes the characteristics of a metal observed by Jeffrey? The answer is letter C. Metals are malleable. Alright, so our discussion will focus on elements and compounds. So it's already part 2 because last meeting we discussed about elements and compounds part 1. Alright, so as you can notice, this is the periodic table of elements. The silver in color, okay, they are the metals. Then we have the metalloids here, yellow green. Then we have the yellow, the non metals, one here, okay. So this is the predictable of elements. So this, uh, in elements or in the predictable of elements, we have the so called group, we also have the period. Then we also have the representative elements. Then we have the transition elements. So let's uh, know them. So this is the group 1 element. Group 2. Group 3. Group 4. Group 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have from group 1 to group 18. Then for the period, we have period 1, period 2, period 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we only have from period period 1 to period 7. So what happened to these two here? So these two lines here are in here. For example, lantern, this is will come here. Or will be inserted here. So then this also the second line here will be inserted in the next line also. So they belong to so the lanthanide group we they belong to uh period six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then the actinide group they belong to period seven. Then we have the so called the per, uh, representative elements. They are the group 1, group 2, then we have here group 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So again, group 1, group 2, then 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Then the rest of the elements are already transition. We call them transition elements. They belong to group 3, 4, Group 5, Group 6, Group 7, Group 8, Group 9, Group 10, Group 11, Group 12. Alright, so besides having the group uh, number, the period, the transition, and the representative elements, we also have the so-called group name. Group name of the elements. So, for group 1, we call them alkaline metals. Group 2, alkaline earth metals. Group 3, Four, five, six. All right. So we have scandium, titanium, vanadium family, chromium family, manganese family. Group eight, iron family. Group nine, cobalt family. Group ten, nickel family. Group eleven, the copper family. Group twelve, the, the zinc family. Group thirteen, the boron family. Group fourteen, the carbon family. Group fifteen, the nitrogen family. Group sixteen, the oxygen family or the. Uh, Chalco so for group 16 the chalcogens uh, or oxygen family then group 17 the halogens or you may just uh, mention halogens and then for group 18 the helium or the neon family alright so you may just mention their um, name like helium without mentioning the family in uh, when you answer your activity okay so let's uh, start answering your activity now so for example here iodine so iodine the symbol is so in this column you're going to write symbol if uh, the name is given and you're going to write the name if the symbol is given so for iodine the symbol is i and the group number is 17 
Then the group name is Halogen or Halogens. Then the period is 5. Iodine a representative element or a transition element. So as you can see, iodine is where can we find iodine? It's in here. So iodine belongs to the representative element because transition elements are uh, in between the representative. So we're going to check here the representative and put X mark here in the transition. For mercury, mercury is, uh, the name is mercury. The symbol is HG. The group number is 12. The group name, what is the group name for mercury? Okay, so zinc. Okay, it's zinc. Zinc family or zinc. Then we have period is 6. Okay, let's try to check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's period 6. Mercury is period 6. Then, is it a representative or a transition element? So, it is not a representative element. So, put X here. Instead, put check here. Okay, so the rest, you are going to answer them. Anyway, the answer case are already found at the uh, end part of your book or booklet. Okay, next, let's proceed to the properties of metal. So, we have first is luster or lustrous then it is the reason why our met metals are shiny next is metals are ductile ductile that means it can be drawn into wires an example is copper next is um Malleable or malleability. That's the next property of metal. So first, lustrous. Next is ductility. Third is malleability. It has the ability to be hammered or rolled into thin sheets without breaking. Example is aluminum. So have you tried using aluminum foil to wrap your food? That's a metal. It's an aluminum. Next property fourth property is magnetic it means that they are attracted to a magnet then the fifth property is electrical and thermal conductivity so metals are allows electricity and heat to pass through them okay so you just also read this part here so how essential elements are to our lives so for example calcium so the source is milk or our milk cheese canned fish with bones sesame seeds green leafy vegetables so the function is it's essential to form and maintain the bones and teeth regulates nerve transmission muscle contraction and blood clotting so the deficiency of this is rickets in children. So, magdeform yung bones nila. Uh, diseases of bones in adults such as softening of the bones and decrease in bone mass. Just read the remaining. So there, masabutra pa siya. Then let's proceed to these acids and bases. So first is you are going to prepare this indicator um, using the eggplant peel so lutuon siya pagkahuman kay kuhaon ang iyahang um, sabaw pagkakuan pagkabukal butangan ug tawas para ma magpabilin ang iyahang color and later on mabugnaw mo siya gamitin niyo pag identify kung acidic or basic ang usaka uh, usaka compound Okay, so we're done in the previous mid mood, I mean previous discussion about elements. So this time about acids and bases is an example or they're under compounds. So you just read here. There are also answer keys at the end part. Okay, so thank you for being with me.